if you'd like to turn in your Bibles, I'm going to go there in just a few minutes, but I want to just kind of bring you into the text. It's found in John chapter 3, verse 8. John chapter 3, verse 8 is the text that I have for you today. John chapter 3, verse 8. Now, the Feast of Weeks, which is a Jewish holidays that they experience. The Feast of Weeks began sundown May 16th, 2021, or 2021. And, and it ends today. And it's what today is known as Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost is literally 50 days from Passover. So now what was Passover? Just quickly, Passover is coming out of Egypt while Pentecost 50 days later is getting the spirit of Egypt, uh, slavery and poverty out of us. Now that's what that is all about. So Pentecost was originally a celebration of the giving of the Ten Commandments. Now, as the followers of Jesus, while they're celebrating this feast in the upper room, in Acts chapter 2, it says, we, they were all filled with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, now you got to remember, in the very beginning, Pentecost was about writing the laws of God, not on the tablet, or was on the tablets of stone as with Moses. But now, not anymore, it is written on the hearts of believers, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Today is the day we celebrate that the church was born and, and the Holy Spirit gave birth to the body of Christ, the church. Now, August 19th, 19, or 1886, former Baptist Richard Sperling, he preached at Mill House, on, at, this is at Barney Creek, Tennessee, and at that meeting, eight people formed what was called Christian Union. Ten years later from that meeting, uh, uh, there was a revival that broke out of the Shear Schoolhouse in North Carolina. And believers experienced an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Ten years later, the Christian Union became the Church of God. That's how we got started. But now, that's not the beginning of the church. It's only the beginning of our denomination, the church of God. So when the Old Testament ended, it ended with God not uh, 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 pronouncing, let me put it this way, pronouncing a curse on the earth, and God did not speak to the human race for 400 years. And so you thought that you haven't heard from God in the last two days. 400 years he was silent. Why was he silent? He refused to speak. And it was a dark time for the children of Israel. It was a time when the land was filled with violence, wickedness, and uh, idolatry. The worship was corrupted, including the priesthood, and the sacrifices were all polluted. Sin had filled the land, the nations, and the families. And God said, I won't accept your sacrifice and your worship. So let me tell you something. There was no solution to the pollution they had going on in their lives. I want to read John chapter 3, verse 8. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. John chapter 3, verse 8. Just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. I haven't come to, today to try to explain to you about the Holy Spirit. He's the wind that blows. You know, we always used to go, which way is the wind blowing from? Well, I don't know. Up, oh, maybe that way. No. Golfers will take and pick up some grass and throw it in the air to see which way it blows. Wind, wind. The only solution to their problem after 400 years of, of, of silence was the wind from elsewhere. To blow away the corruption, the darkness, the sickness, the disease, the heartache, and the brokenness of mankind. After Jesus died, 
and rose again. He told his disciples, I want you to go to the upper room and I want you to wait. Now, I want to, I, so what I want to talk about is what were they waiting on? He said, I want you to go back. I want you to wait right there. I don't want you to do anything else. What were they waiting on? They were waiting on the wind from elsewhere. Acts chapter 2 opens like this. When the day of Pentecost had fully, totally come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly, 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 when God does things, I believe He makes a noise. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. Was it the last hurricane that we watched our steeple? We were here, whatever the name of that hurricane was, and the building made eerie sounds, and all the wind was blowing, and we went up there, and you could watch our steeple. From the inside, we kept thinking, yeah, it's going to go, it's going to go, it's going to go. The wind was... Didn't let up. It said on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, there was a sound... Of a rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as fire. That set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. With other tongues. And the Spirit gave them utterances. Of, that was the beginning of the church that we know of. And that we're experiencing now. What they were experiencing that day was a wind from elsewhere. There came a sound from heaven, a mighty rushing wind. The wind cleansed everything. It took the shame, the guilt, the condemnation of sin. It took it all away. When the wind from elsewhere breathed on them in the upper room, watch this, there were 120 in the upper room. It spilled out. And they went into the streets and they boldly proclaimed the power of Jesus Christ. This 120 got it that morning. They got it that day. And then they began to tell everybody what had happened to them. And 3,000 instantly were added to their number. Why? Because they told people about what God had done for them. I think we're afraid to tell people today what God's doing. Because we're afraid to tell people that if you're sick, you can be healed. Well, what if they don't get healed? Good question. So I think the best thing to do is just don't bring it up. Let everybody just go and be sick. Well, see, I just can't help believe that he still heals. And I think God is looking for people that don't know him, that he wants to shower them with a healing. But it's not you that does it. Greater is he that's in you. That, that spirit that is with you. Acts chapter 4 says that uh, there was a lame man from birth that was laying at the gate beautiful. And, 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 and he gets healed in the name of Jesus. You know, Peter and John, are going, they're going off to the temple and they just said, what we've got we give to you. Now, now, there's nothing to be afraid about telling someone, what I got, I'm going to give to you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. They're going to empty out their bill for and give it to Hallelujah. Did I ever tell you that I was standing in line? There was an individual in front of me, didn't like me. Oh, they let it known all over town they didn't like me. <laughs> and I didn't want to interrupt them because they were busy and <laughs> Maybe I didn't want to talk to them anyway because they don't. Did I tell you they didn't like me? They don't like you either, Butch. <laughs> I've heard the news in town. They don't like us. I don't know what I don't know what I did. I know what Butch. I don't know what I did. He just Butch. I didn't do anything. So I was very quiet because they had their back to me, and then they were paying the lady there at the register and. We had our stuff, and he turned back. He just had the biggest smile. He had to, didn't he? Well, yeah, that's okay. I said who it was. No, I didn't either. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who it was. Uh, but he smiled at me. And then he stood there for 10 minutes and talked to me like we were best friends. And the very one that doesn't like me... He shook my hand and put something in my hand and 
I didn't think nothing about it. I thought, oh, a dollar or so. It's a hundred dollar bill. I still got it in my bill full. I'm afraid to spend it. <laughs> I never had anybody that didn't like me give me something. <laughs> I got it in my, I, I'm afraid to spend I won't give it away neither because I'm afraid to. I, I just hold on to it because even those that don't like you every once in a while might give you something. Well, I've come to tell you today the Holy Spirit likes you. And what he's been talking about you is good. And what he wants for you is good. And he is available and ready today to give it to you. So here, now, this man that has been there. See, all you got to do is just, I want to give you what I got. Go from there. The, Peter and John said, I, we don't have any money. Because we've been setting up for 10 days and we ain't none of us been to work. And, 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 and we got something while we were waiting on the day of Pentecost. We got something we never had before. And in the name of Jesus, get up. I dare you to try it sometime. Then 5,000 people experience the wind from elsewhere. What I'm trying to tell you today, the wind from elsewhere has not stopped. It's still available. It's still blowing. And he wants to blow across the hearts of people that do know nothing about him. Why is it so important that we experience this wind from elsewhere? Because what we're facing right now in our government, there seems to be no solution. People are still uh, fearful. People are still addicted like never before. There's hopelessness and people are giving up. I try not to be political, but we have a president who can't fix it. There ain't any president that can fix it. The government can't fix it. The doctors can't fix it. Just as Jesus told his disciples, wait for the wind from elsewhere to show up. I believe that on this Pentecost Sunday that God is wanting to say to you, hold on, don't give up. The wind from elsewhere is blowing again to give us a brand new beginning. Do not quit. Every generation has had children addicted to drugs, uh, spouses addicted to alcohol, uh, wringing their hands, watching them commit suicide on an installation plan or installment plan, and they're saying we don't know what to do. The only thing that can change what you are facing, what your families expect are facing, is to experience a win from elsewhere. Cause that win, when it hits your life, it will change you completely. Acts chapter 2 is not over with. The promise is unto you, to your children and to your children's children, as many as the Lord shall call. We need the wind from elsewhere to interrupt our lives because we don't have all the answers, but God does. In Ezekiel chapter 37, God showed Ezekiel this valley of dry bones that were scattered in the valley. You know the story. God asked the prophet, he asked him a question. Can these bones live again? Ezekiel answered like a politician. He did not say yes or no. He said, Lord God, you only know the answer to that. He didn't say yes or no. Just you know. God said to him, prophesy to the wind. Thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath. Breathe upon these slain that they may live. They were dead, dry, and divided bones. Now when I look at that, I think of us today in, in our nation. We're dead, we're dry, we're divided. I don't think people have a solution to the problems we have yet. But there is a solution to our situation. Come from the four winds, O breath. Breathe upon those slain, and they may live. When he prophesied, those bones came together. And they stood up on their feet when the wind from elsewhere showed up. Just as the wind breathed on the dead bones and brought them back to life, the Holy Spirit can put in you put a life back into your dead life. That's what He wants to do. That's what it's all about today. I've come to tell you, He wants to fill you with life. 
Numbers chapter 11 verse 31 says, And they went forth wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them fall in the camp two cubits high. Now, do you know how deep two cubits high? Knee deep. Birds, quail. When God's people had a need, they needed provision, they needed food, the wind from elsewhere knew where the quail were, caught them up in the current of wind from elsewhere and dropped them into the camp. Israelites were in the middle of a, a desert uh, with no way to, to meet the need that they had and the wind from elsewhere brought provisions to them knee deep. I'm come to tell you today that the wind from elsewhere is blowing again during this season of Pentecost. If you need it, heaven's answers to your situation on this day of Pentecost Sunday, all you got to do, I do believe this, is say, God, I can't go another day. I need the wind from elsewhere to blow on me. Now, I told you, was it last week? I told you about the revival of California that's broke out and, and it's moving and, and prophets are prophesying that it's going to sweep across America and nobody's going to be able to stop it. Early this morning, I heard the Lord speak to me and say, you don't have to wait for it to get here. He's already here and he wants to blow on you today. We ain't got to wait. Because we're not people of defeat. We're not people that are hopeless. As long as the wind from elsewhere is blowing one more time in these last days. What are you facing today? Forget what our nation is going through. What are you facing today in your own life? What's going on in your life? What's happening in your situation? I'm telling you that God is wanting to fill you with that wind from elsewhere. You know, a lot of people don't like, you know, well, Baptists say once saved, always saved. And, you know, and I, I, people used to ask me, and they don't ask me much anymore what I believe because I said, I am. I'm saved. Now, oh yeah, when did you get the Holy Ghost? My mom says that at five years old, she said, I spoke in tongues. I, I don't remember it. I don't remember a lot, of, you know, when I was young like that. But I know right after that moment, I had an old fruit uh, basket thing, a crate. Mama said in the afternoon after school, I'd put that crate upside down. And she said, I preached too. So I've been practicing many years to get the veins pop out on the side. She said, I preached hard. I don't know what to preach. But anyway, she said I'd preach and my audience was a cat. Said the cat would get out there and lay down and rub and then come up and rub around me and then sit back down. And so, I, you know, I'm used to empty seats. Just as long as there's a cat. <laughs> See, I, I go way back with cats too. And, 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 you know, and, and, and anyway, and, and, and mama said I'd preach. And mama said when I'd get through, I'd be, you know, I'd have to get something to wipe my face because I was all sweaty from preaching outside. And, and, and mama said, always said that I would tell her when I grow up, I'm going to be a preacher. And I'm going to preach like Frank Culpepper. Now, Frank Culpepper was my pastor at that time. And she said, that's who I was going to preach like. Of course, now I do not know of course, he's gone on to be with the Lord many years ago, so I have no clue how he preached now. But anyway, back then, all I'm trying to say to you today is that a wind got a hold of my life back then. Oh, did I stay with the wind? Oh, no. I strayed, just like you. I become a teenager. And I, I was good at it. My hair got long, I just put it, I'm surprised my ears don't do like this because in the church back then, boys didn't let their hair grow long and I was growing mine out and daddy was kind of at that time not doing well health-wise and so 
mama just couldn't do anything with me, so I just put my hair, you know, behind my ear and stuck it down in my shirt so the people in the church, and, and, and listen, I know the Bible, because when people would tell me, Terry, you're going to go to hell for your hair being long, and I'd tell them, yeah, but the guy that got a haircut and the Bible went blind, I'm not going blind. And, 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 and then, you know, but back then I thought I had it made because, you know, you, you act like church when you're in church. And then when you get with your friends that aren't church going people, you act like, hey, does any, yes, you know what I'm talking about. No need to ask you to raise your hand. Some of you are doing it right now. And, and, and I remember back then on Sunday nights we had testimony sir. And it weren't just randomly. Everybody got to testify. I'd watch it, you know. And I'd have to conveniently have to go to the bathroom when it'd almost get to my row. And I waited long enough outside just so I'd know that they were through and I'd come sliding back in. And the pastor had the gall to say, you know, Terry, everybody else got to testify. Why don't you tell us something? And, but now, that was the most scaredest. I, I don't know that I've ever been scared, but that was the scaredest point of my life. Because I knew that I knew what it was to serve God and not serve God. And at that point, I was on the other side. And so you have to be careful that you don't offend God and make him mad at you so he wouldn't come back to you anymore. See, that's the way I thought. So, you know, you, I'm just glad that God gave me good parents. And, you know, and boy, school's doing really well and I'm not failing. And boy, you preach good tonight, Pastor. You know, just elude that I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, a member of the church of God, going to heaven. I'd say those kinds of things. Those could be... Uh, those could be bad. And, 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 you know, so, yeah, I started out maybe young when the wind blew. But then, you know, I went through a period where I didn't know what I wanted. All I could tell you was I wanted to be a hell's angel. Because mm. I saw them come through town. You've heard me tell that. Sitting in the back seat of the car and they rode up on their motorcycle. Them was the ugliest men I ever saw. And I could not figure out how in the world they got such pretty girls on the back of that motorcycle with them. Half dressed. That's what I noticed, I think. I was young. I, I had to be a preacher. That was when I was five. I want to ride a motorcycle. I finally rode a motorcycle. Had a beautiful girl sitting on the back with me for months or two until we got our car fixed after she wrecked it. And uh, I keep telling her, can we buy another motorcycle? And you and I ride on it. And uh, I never became a hell's angel because uh, the wind blew again. And when the wind blew this time, it got a hold of me. And I'll never forget, I got in college. David was probably three or four at that time. We were going to Lumber City Church of God. Now, they were more old-fashioned. I had a mustache, a wild hairdo, and, and uh, I couldn't sing on stage and couldn't do anything because I had a mustache and my hair was... Um, Afroed out, if that's correct to say. I don't want permed. Is that that term I'm looking for? And, and uh, so I remember that I, I I kind of pushed preaching to the side, and and, and uh, my, my my voice teacher said you can't preach anymore, you can't sing in the choir, all this stuff because you ruin your voice doing that, and we want you to be a good singer. So I pursued music. I drug Debbie for two years across all over Georgia. As, Southern or south, east, east of Alabama to North Florida singing, waiting for somebody to pick me up. And I'll never forget the wind blew on a Sunday morning in Lumber City Church of God. Somebody got up and spoke in tongues. Wind was blowing. And then the wind also gave the interpretation. Said, I've called you back to the place where you put a stake in the ground on the mountaintop. I'm calling you back to that place. Huh. I cried like a baby that morning. Wasn't that about a month later, I quit singing with the group and, uh, and shaved my mustache <laughs> and got my hair fixed. 
Not because of them. I still want a mustache, but my baby doesn't like them. And the wind, I wasn't backslid, but maybe I was. I went to church, couldn't do anything. But that morning, the wind blew, crossed, got my attention. Because I knew exactly what that meant. What I'm trying to say to you this morning is, the wind's blowing this morning. I sense it. I feel it. Maybe you've been running. The wind's wanting to blow across your heart to quit, cause you not to run any longer. He's not going to ask you to do something you can't do. The wind's blowing. So first of all today, if you're running, why don't you stop and let him blow on you right now? That was the best thing I ever did in my life, for my life, Debbie's life, David and Andy. Secondly, when's the last time you felt the Holy Spirit move in your heart, in your life? Uh, if you haven't experienced him any this week, I'd be saying right now, Lord, breathe on me today. Blow on me. Help me, God. Do something in my life. See, I don't think that being filled with the Holy Spirit is a one-time event. Continually be filled. I think the Holy Spirit wants to move and blow on you every day that you get up. And I've come to tell you today, God wants to breathe life into you through that wind that comes from elsewhere. It's the Holy Spirit. Father, this morning, God, there are people here today I don't know what they have need of. Oh, I know some, their need, especially in the area of healing. Some have a financial need. Some, some just have a need. Lord, I'm not worried about the need right now. I'm worried about their life. Would you breathe on them in the name of Jesus? Lord, your disciples just spoke and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, you breathed on them. So I'm saying today, Lord, for someone that may have not have never even experienced speaking in tongues, would you Breathe on them right now. And I say in the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Father, don't let this season that we're in pass, pass people by. God, you're looking. The wind is blowing in areas. Lord, we may not feel it and we're not hearing it. But I've come to tell you, Today, God, I sense that you're breathing and blowing life. You that haven't had any joy for a while, <laughs> just say, Lord, breathe on me. Right where you are, just say, Lord, breathe on me. You that had chronic illness or whatever it might be, and you've been struggling and you can't get any relief, why don't you just say, Lord, would you just breathe on me? Some of you that are struggling in some areas in your own life that are personal, you wouldn't want anybody to know what you're struggling with. All you have to do right now is say, Lord, breathe on me. He'll do it. As I tell you every week, it's very simple. He's waiting for an invitation. Invite him in. Lord, I pray that you would somehow this week hallelujah God let somebody in the middle of the night tonight after they fall asleep let them wake up speaking in tongues for some reason someone here is scared to death to speak in tongues. Lord, let them in their sleep start speaking in tongues and wake themselves up and wake up their spouse speaking in tongues. Hmm. 
Hallelujah. Now, Lord, blow on us no matter where it is that we may be like those first disciples that will boldly proclaim that Jesus Christ is the answer to your situation. Let us be bold and not afraid to speak your name say, I don't have anything, but what he's deposited in me, I'm going to give it to you. Get up. Be healed. Thank you that we have the promise. And it's in us. But it's not only in us. For our children and our children's children to all generations that the Lord shall call. Thank you, Lord. For this day and this season, we're living in God. We're living in some of the best days ever because we're living in the middle of a move of God. And we give you the praise for it.